There's a couple different approaches to approach anxiety, and I'll deal with it differently in different contexts. So if I have a student on a live program, I'm having to deal with approach anxiety, probably I'm gonna take the jump in the, the, the pool and swim approach because I'm there with him and I can do it right there with him. And it's gonna be faster. All right, I'll just shove him into a difficult, difficult set. Maybe I'll go wing him, maybe I'll open a set and bring him into it, but I'll make him get into sets and make him do approaches because I'm there to monitor the process. However, if I'm coaching someone online or coaching someone from distance, I'll usually take a different approach because asking someone to go do a difficult set when I'm not around when they have approach anxiety, oftentimes they're just gonna not do it or they'll just not they're follow through. And they have no way of recovering. Maybe, possibly that too. More often than not, they just don't do it. More often they just walk around and don't even do the set, but that's also a possibility. So in that case, I'll take a different approach, which is kind of progressive desensitization. <laughs> so there I'll be like, okay, walk around and you know, say hi to like 10 different people, ask for directions to 10 different people, ask for directions, give a compliment and leave, et cetera. So and I'll get, have this gradual buildup to actually doing a set. And, and that works really well also, right? And so there are a lot of different approaches to it. There are a ton of different approaches. However, so you have approach anxiety, right? Do you have a family? Yeah. Do you have a family? Yeah. Okay. If someone like put a gun to someone's head in your family and said, go do that approach, or I will shoot them, yeah. would you have approach anxiety? No. no. Right? So you physically can handle it. You physically can do go do the approach, right? If, it, if you've truly decided there is no choice, there's no more anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so the fundamental best answer is to just eliminate choice, to just whether because you care enough about it or you want this other thing enough, or because you've just made a moral choice that this is wrong. Like it is wrong for me not to approach. That's what I actually did. Right? I got to a point where I had not approached so many times in my life and it hurt so bad that I had not approached that I made a moral decision. This it sounds weird as a moral decision. I made a moral decision <clears throat> that no girl on my college campus that was walking around and, and attractive didn't get approached. That was, it was actually like, I just said, it's, it's the right thing to do and I'll do it because it's right no matter how hard it is. Right? And the same way that people are like, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> right? That shalt thou shalt approach. Right? And to be fair, even I didn't fully commit because I didn't know how to approach groups. So I only did that. That was only thou shalt approach if she's alone at the time. So there's a lot of things, like I said, like getting coaching and getting pushed can do it. Doing progressive desensitization can do it. But fundamentally, <clears throat> to anybody, and I'm saying this to the camera as well as everybody else, like fundamentally, if you want it badly enough, there's no such thing as approach anxiety. Like if you truly, truly, truly want it bad enough, no such thing. That make sense? Like if you truly made the decision, you're more terrified of not getting good at game than you are of the girl, then there's no more approach anxiety. And that, that's what it was for me. There was that, that moment of flip where just like, I absolutely will not tolerate rejecting myself anymore. Absolutely, I just, no. It's not even, never again. Yeah. It's all about emotional le um, leverage, <clears throat> that emotional point where you just like, fuck this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where you want to get eventually. Now, if along the way you want to do things like build up to it, by all means. If you want to have a wing push you and have camaraderie, by all means. If you want to give, give someone that 50 bucks if I don't do it, by, there's all kinds of gimmicks you can do. But fundamentally, you need to come to a place where there's intrinsic motivation. Whether it's because you've either suffered too much by not doing it, or because you've done some approaches and they've gone well and you're like, wow, this is actually possible for me. Right? That's the other thing that happens kind of along the same time to me. So here's how, here's how I got over my approach anxiety by accident. Right? Um, <clears throat> I hadn't done a lot of approaches. I'd seen a lot of girls growing up through high school and that I wanted to approach and I hadn't. Right? But I went on my, my college tour. I went to go visit the various colleges I was looking at maybe applying to. Um, and when I got to the college, I had to find out where am I going to go for the next four years. And my choices were go on like guided tours given by the college, which I thought was complete bullshit. Right? Or when my mom was on the tour with me. I could walk around the campus with my mom. That sounded like a lot of fun. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um, but what I really wanted to do, I was just like, I'm going to wander around and I'm going to figure this out by myself. So I started wandering around the campus and I realized that was, it was kind of pointless to, to wander. So I realized I needed to talk to people. I needed to interact in some way. So I started just walking up to people and just saying, hey, look, I'm a pr prospective student. Like, you know, do you like the school? How are you, you know, what do you guys do here, et cetera. And I realized that once I had that premise, I could go talk to a girl just as easily as I could talk to a guy. So here I was for like a two week college trip where I had the easiest way to talk to someone and I just started walking around and going up to girls and asking them that. I'm like, hey, I'm a prospective student. You know, I'm looking at your college. Just keep, you know, tell me, you know, show me around a little bit. Tell me what, what you do, where you're where you headed right now. And a lot of them were really friendly. Some were like, oh, yeah, that's really cool. Actually, come on, I'm going back to my dorm right now. Come meet my friends. Like, bring me back to this dorm room full of hot girls. I'm like, this is amazing. I'd be like, oh, yeah, we're going to a party tonight here. You know, meet, meet up with us. We'll show you, we'll show you the, the ropes. 
Like, oh, fucking amazing, this is great. Um, and so that was my experience of college. Right? And then I got to actual college, and I didn't have that premise anymore. And for, I, I walked around for a little bit, and I was like, well, this is different. This isn't as cool as it was. So I was like, fuck it. Well, my experience of like exploring colleges was walking up to girls and talking to them. All right, now I feel like a loser for not doing it. Well, again, A, I know it can be done. B, I feel like a loser for not doing it. So I just, I will not tolerate that for myself. I'm gonna go <coughs> fucking go talk to girls. And I started doing it. I, I just became like an approach machine on my college campus. All right, I talked to every single, in the first two years that I was at my school, I talked to and either got a number from or got rejected by every single hot girl in my school. <clears throat> Did you become that guy? Like that guy. Oh, I totally became that guy. And, and were there many like so, uh, social repercussions from that? Not as many as you'd think. Not as many as you'd think. Um, I had some interesting moments. I had I had one, I had one weekend where I had um, a date on Saturday, a date on Sunday um, with two girls, and I showed up for the Saturday date, and the Sunday girl answered the door because the Saturday date was with her roommate. <laughs> so I had that one. Wow. Huh? On, did you go on the second I went on both, weirdly oh, yeah, enough. Yeah. I was so surprised. I thought I was done. I was like, well, I guess I'm not. She's like, no, I'll still go with you. I was like, okay. Right? And I went on both of them. Neither one of them went either way, and they were both very awkward dates, but they both agreed and, and went out with me. 